Good morning. This is rather early morning and I am standing near a plant which I had the opportunity to watch growing over the last four, five years. This was, this was a tiny little plant. Now it's grown. When I look around, around me everywhere, I find everything growing. The grass is growing, plants are growing, trees are growing. Now if you remember, we also were in the process of growing you still are in the process of growing unlike me physically i have stopped growing but i don't have to stop growing mentally and spiritually there is no limit to it but that's another issue let's stay with the idea of growing one of the things i want to emphasize is the fact that the most important and i would say the most sacred thing in the life of a human being is his or her growth. I want to emphasize this because it is not often done. People think that the goal of spirituality or religion is to send you off to heaven or to ensure you a better second birth or third birth. I don't think that's the point at all. The immediate thing, the practical thing, the thing on which we have any control at all is our own growth. We can decide on how we should grow and into what we should grow. Now, as I said, when you look at nature, you see nothing but growth everywhere. Now, when I planted this uh, little sapling, I made sure that the soil was prepared, the manure was put, and planted it and after that made sure that the conditions favorable to the growth of the plant were obtained. Now the same thing applies to human beings also. We grow up in our homes where we have a certain environment. Then we move into the society where also we experience a certain environment. Then later on you will move into your workstations, there you have an environment. But the one thing I want to say, without wanting to sound very negative, is the fact that the environment to which we are exposed today, whether it is home, whether it is the immediate neighborhood, whether it is the workplace, whether it is the larger society, is not very conducive to our growth. This is not a matter of complaint, this is only a very gentle warning. Why this warning? Because if the environment, the multiple levels of environment obtained around us all the time is not particularly conducive to our growth, then the duty upon us to do everything possible to ensure our growth to full stature becomes all the more important. Let me give you a couple of illustrations. There is that wonderful British thinker of the 19th century called John Stewart, uh, James Stewart Mill. His father was uh, John. Now, when this little boy was growing up, from the age of three, his father started educating him, introducing him. First, at the age of four, he was introduced to the Greek language and literature. Can you imagine, at the age of four? And he was made to read all the Greek classics. Then at the age of 8, he was introduced to Latin. At the age of 12, he was introduced to Roman law. He was introduced to British history. He was introduced to world history. Now, this is a kind of intellectual atmosphere that this little boy experienced in the process of growing up. No wonder he became a great intellectual, one of the most respected intellectuals of the early 19th century. Now let me think, uh, 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 talk to you about somebody else, the great giant of European uh, you know, uh, culture. His full name is Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. Now the same thing happened. He grew up in an intellectually vibrant domestic atmosphere, but that's not all. He lived in a small town. And as he would go out, 
the keepers of the various monuments in the town would help him understand the history and the significance of everything in the town. So there was education taking place in the town. He had also people who were culturally, educationally enlightened with whom he could work. Now, if you just remember these two random examples, you will know that the atmosphere of the environment in which we are growing up is rather poor. There is hardly any intellectual stimulation at home. There is hardly any intellectual stimulation in our congregations, in our neighborhood, in our communities, and in the society at large. And since we are not aware of anything else, we think that this is the norm, it's all right. But I want to tell you that this is not all right. Why is this not all right? Because we are not realizing our full potential. For me, as an educa educator and an ardent teacher, the greatest sadness in life is that a person dies without realizing his full potential. There is nothing sad about a person dying. It is natural. In fact, I would say that when I die, people should rejoice. Why should they rejoice? Because here is a man, I would like to think, who has used his life, his time, his opportunities properly with responsibility. So, if that's the case, my death is not an occasion for sadness, it's an occasion for celebration. When I retired from the office of the principal of St. Stephen's College, I celebrated my retirement as a festival because I did my absolute best during my tenure as the principal of the college. But what I want to tell you very specifically and with utmost candor is that I was able to do it because I took care of my youth. Now, that's the key and that's the reason why I'm sharing this with you. So, if the environments around us are not very stimulating intellectually and not very conducive to our growth, what shall we do about it? We can't say, well, I will not grow because the society around me is not very good. Now, that's an excuse. And no excuse is helpful when it comes to personal growth. What I did for myself, and I can only say this as part of my experience, I grew up in great poverty, so I couldn't really buy books. There was no television in those days, thank God. There, I didn't even have a radio till I reached the age of 17. But what I did was, I read avidly whatever came my way. For example, I would read the English and Malayalam newspapers with deep interest. I would learn editorials by heart. I can even now quote the editorial that Frank Moraes, who was the editor-in-chief of the Indian Express at that time, wrote when Lal Bahadur Shastri died in Tashkent. I can quote the entire editorial even today. Additionally, I had a copy of the English Bible and I did not have much grounding in English in those days, but somehow I fell in love with this language. So I began to read the English Bible and I was struck by its beauty. And I began to learn verses after verses, chapter after, after chapter, book after book by heart. That's how I learned the English language. So my experience convinces me that even if we are living in an intellectually poor background, there are ways and the ways available today are far, far superior, incomparably better than what was available to me. For example, we can cultivate friendship with great authors. I experience reading a book as an experience of friendship. And I'm in a state of privilege when I read a book because I'm cultivating friendship with a great mind. What an exciting thing it is. So when I read a book in that fashion, it becomes a very different experience. So there are ways of overcoming this problem. There are also 
ways of dealing with this problem in terms of the world around us. I'll have learned a great deal from nature. Nature is one of my major books, my major source of in, uh, uh, insight and continuous learning is nature. Even a blade of grass teaches me something. I've learned a great deal from experiences. But the important thing in all this is at this stage, early in life, we develop a keen interest in developing ourselves. Once you have that interest, you will know how to use, of the, use the various facilities available to you and surrounding you. If you don't have an interest in growth, then nothing will really make any sense. So my plea to you, young friends, is that we must wake up to the most important duty we have at the present time to cater to our own growth and to look at our entire situation, the world around us, the resources available to us, the opportunities, the facilities from that point of view. And when you have this kind of interest, you will also know how to protect yourself from unnecessary, meaningless, energy-wasting distractions. Now, the modern world, unlike the world in which I grew up, abounds in distractions. Now, distraction is understood simply as a pull in the opposite direction. Now, suppose you want to go this way, distraction means a pull in this direction. For example, you want to do well in studies, you're going this way. Distraction pulls you this way and says, no, there are other things to do. Now, if you really don't have a commitment to your own growth, then you will not know how to deal with these distractions. And your mind starts playing games with you. Your own mind will tell you, it's okay, today it doesn't matter if you don't study. It doesn't matter how you live today. There are so many days, thousands of days are coming. Uh, if 10 days are wasted, it's all right. Have, a, have fun and games. No, that's not how it is. Every day counts. Ask an athlete. He or she trains 10 years, 12 years looking ahead at the possibility of participate, shall we say, in Olympics. Every day, five hours, six hours, ten hours, the athlete will train. Uh, many of the tennis players, I know tennis was my game, practice for eight to twelve hours, Russian women players in particular. So every day counts. Philip, uh, uh, sorry, what is it, the American swinger, Phel the swimmer Phelps, he said, look, well, others took a break. I went and practiced in the pool every day, knowing that each day they did not practice, and I practiced, I was getting that much leeway uh, 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 over them. So that's how it is with growth. There is no holiday from personal growth. So, young friends, as a person who has gone through this whole experience, walk this way ahead of you, I want to tell you, that the best and the wisest thing you can do for yourself is to grow. And we'll continue to think about what growth means and what more we can do about it. But we'll stay together on this journey and continue to understand the most fundamental, crucial principles of life at this important juncture in your development. Thank you for staying with me. We will resume our journey very soon. Thank you.